I will now demonstrate how to make a photo into an illustration using Adobe Illustrator. So here I'm using my photography uh, as a background layer and I'm just naming the different layers so there's a logical sequence to the layers. And I'll dim the layer by just double clicking the layer and clicking for it to dim. And I'll just proceed by using the pen pencil tool to draw this figure, to draw the contour of the shape. And you can go to the settings of the pencil by just clicking enter or double clicking on the tool itself. I'll switch off Edit Selected Paths and switch off Keep Selected. Actually, Keep Selected can be switched on. Uh, that way you know, um, that, that way you can see when your stroke uh, is complete, that it's highlighted in the color of the layer. Until I'll just Fast forward so you can see how I'm doing this with my pencil tool. This completes the shape. And I'll take that shape and just show you how it looks when there's some fill inside of it. I've put some black fill in it, reversed it back to just being a stroke. And then I'll just draw these shapes by the fingers. And you notice that there are some small holes and gaps inside of them. I'll just correct some parts of the stroke on this guy. And you notice there is no hole in his contour. There's no, uh, no imperfection in this area. But up in these areas, we have these tiny holes because I wasn't precise enough using my pencil tool. So I'll try just drawing a new stroke and you'll see if you end up where you started, it will close the gap so the stroke will be one complete shape. So if I choose to, I can close these gaps by just actually setting the settings for my pencil tool to be edit selected paths. Here I'm just trying to demonstrate if you actually have a hole in your line that you can just redraw that using the pencil tool if you have edit selected path switched on, on in your pencil tool. So here I'm putting color inside of the gaps and I'll take this shape, which is him, and just make it uh, appear. And then by selecting all of it, both the shapes that I've colored red, and also the shape of him, by just selecting all of it and, and making sure that everything beneath is locked, um, I can use the, the pathfinder to make an opening in the areas where his fingers are. So you'll see me doing that now. Using Pathfinder and switch using the minus front option. That way there's a area where you can actually see through. Right now I'm taking the layer where, where there's black fill and just using the transparency panel to just dim down the layer opacity. That way you can always see through the shape. And I'm using curvature tool now, as you see selected over uh, in the tools, using curvature tool to just make sure that all these different tiny uh, anchor points are just made so they fit precisely to the shape. That's using the curvature tool. So the next part is I'll start just drawing one of the shapes, in this case the hand. And perhaps it isn't that precise, so you can just switch the 
accuracy uh, or the smoothness, uh, which is called fidelity, of the pencil tool. In this case, I switched it to be very accurate, and that makes a lot of anchor points and a, lo a lot of jagged lines. So right now, I'm trying to smoothen that out using the smoothing tool. You see that that deletes some anchor points, so there isn't that many. There's also another way of doing so that's actually inside of Object Path Simplify. You can just click the three dots and then you go inside of this menu uh, where you can switch the Simplify Curve and the Corner Point Angle Threshold to make the, the shape seem more simplified. This creates less anchor points than was already, uh, but of course it will simplify the shape. So Watch out, you don't simplify it too much so it doesn't look like the original um, object. I'm just going to fill it with color so we know this shape is done. And I'm going to start redrawing uh, or drawing another shape, his other hand. And I'll just use Object Path Simplify as well on this part and just adjust it uh, so the hand looks nice. And at some point, I'll be happy with the result and click OK and then use the curvature tool to just fix up some parts of his fingers, which seems awkward. So here I'm using the curvature tool just to make sure that it looks nice. And I'm also using pen tool by just uh, using um, the different modifier keys to just make a more precise path than was already. So you can switch between using the pen tool and the curvature tool so you get the right shape. Here I'm using the pencil tool to draw his fingers and right now the, the one finger is not enough. So I'll just uh, make this without color, so there's no fill, uh, so I can just see what I'm doing and I'm trying to draw new fingers um, so it, the shape will look authentic. And, you know, this perhaps is not good, so I'm just going to redraw it and perhaps change the settings for the pencil tool depending on how accurate or how smooth I want the, the line to be. Yeah, and at some point I'll be happy with the result and I'll move on to the next part. So at this point I'll just start using my pencil tool uh, or my pen tool um, or other tools to just draw different shapes inside of his body. In this case, I'm drawing this part with the pencil tool and just doing a quick, quick shape of this part of the body. Next off, I'll try using the blob brush. And the special part about that is if you draw in the same color, it will automatically attach itself to, to other objects of the same color. You can also adjust the fidelity of this tool so it's more accurate or more smooth depending on what you need. Here I'm trying to draw around the, the button of his clothes but you might as well just draw on top of it if, the, if that's the style you're doing it in and just perhaps use um, the ellipse tool to draw a circle representing the button in his clothes. And sometimes it's a good idea to switch off the smart guides because it will often mess with your trace of uh, whatever part you are doing because the mouse will stick, it will glue to um, 
you know, parts. So you can't make a circle or you, or you can't make a curve precisely. So switching off smart guides is a good idea. And here you can see I move my parts of his clothes to another layer. So, so I'm not getting it mixed up in the layer where the entire body is. Yeah, and I'll just do a quick forward uh, where I'm drawing all the different parts of his, his body. And I'll draw his face. I'll just switch off the visibility because that is annoying if I have to draw all the different shapes inside of his face. So I toggled off the visibility and now I'm going to draw his beard um, and that will require some higher accuracy. So I'll set it to have a higher accuracy in the settings for using the, the brush. And I'll just start drawing like random jagged lines, assimilating his hair. And with a blob brush set to a size of two, I'll just start drawing the different lines uh, inside of his face. And just, you know, simplify it. You could do it more detailed, uh, but you don't have to. So now I'm taking his skin color and putting it below um, all of these details. So just make sure that it also has uh, like a skin color that you feel suits your character. <laughs> and I'm just trying to make him not look too ugly. <laughs> and here I'll put some color in the background just to show that the transparency works well. Oh, sorry, not the transparency, the, the holes in the figure. And I'll be sure to put the compound shape, which is his body, in front of that background color by just unlocking the layer which I had locked and making the layer black or non-transparent, which is his body. In this case, it's made transparent, so I'll just set it to be 100% opaque. And that way the black from his, uh, his, sh his shape uh, is, is showing 100% uh, opaque. And just to finish off, I'll put some text in. So I'll just write that with my type tool. And I'll just create outlines of the text because these uh, question marks needs to be tilted. And that's easier with create outlines, type create outlines, and then ungrouping, object ungroup. So I can get a hold of each and every different character and just zoom in so you can rotate it with your move tool. I'll just rotate these then group them again. And there we have it. 